What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron, and in this video, I wanna show you guys something that Synology sent over for me to check out, and it's something I'm gonna be using in the future, and that's this Disk Station DS923+. Plus. They also sent me four four terabyte Synology hard drives, as well as this Synology network upgrade module. This thing can handle one NVMe drive, as well as four standard hard drives. And with that network upgrade module, it can even handle 10 gigabits of ethernet. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open this thing up and take a look at it and what's inside. All right, so out of the box, you're gonna get a couple ethernet cables, a power supply and power cord, and then you're gonna get some screws for hard drives, a quick installation guide, and best of all, the disk station itself. So let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. So there's the Synology disk station in all its beauty. And it does look similar to the TerraMaster, especially like the logo, how it's got the lines, the ventilation holes behind it, but pretty basic, but we're gonna get into it. And I think what's really awesome about Synology to me is their software. So like you can see on the front, it's got these four bays and that's for four hard drives, which they've sent me four hard drives. So we'll get to test out the performance of their hard drives in their hardware, which I'm really excited for. On the front, we have a bunch of indicator lights. We have a status indicator that's gonna indicate the status of the device itself, and then a status indicator for each of the four hard drives. You also get a USB port and a power button. Here on the back, you can see those massive fans for keeping these things cool. And then you can see the ethernet ports down here, LAN one and LAN two, an SD card slot it looks like, uh, one of those special DC in jacks that go with this DC in cable. And then this little slot, which I think is for your network upgrade module, but we're gonna find out. And then lastly, you have another USB port and one of those little security holes, whatever that's for. So that's pretty much it for this thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the network module upgrade card, which you can see I have here, it just gives you 10 gigabit ethernet capability. And that's actually just gonna go right in here. So we're gonna pop those screws off and put this thing in. All right, so for this, we'll go ahead and just use our wow stick to take this out. Two screws. So we'll just take our network card and we're gonna pop it right in there. So there's the network card. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and rip these things open and get started installing these bad boys. Okay, so now that we've got all the four hard drives unpacked, we're gonna go ahead and install each of them into these bays. All right, so they make installing these super easy. All you gotta do is pop one of these things out and then you're gonna see these little side panel things on the side. You're just gonna pop those off like this. Once you have them popped off, you just take your hard drive, you set it right there. And then you take the side pieces and put them right back where you got them. Okay, we'll do the second side piece here, popping the one end in, snap it into place, and there you go. To install it now, all you do is leave this handle pulled out, slide it in here, and click it in. There you go, hard drive installed. So now we'll just do the rest of these. And there it is. All the hard drives are now installed and we can go ahead and power it up. Before we do that though, I wanna show this uh, little security key. And this is something that Synology uh, provides. And what it is, is it gives you the ability to lock these hard drives in. So you just put the key in here like this and turn it. And that locks these handles down so that no one can just pop one out super easily. So it's just a little security feature, I guess. And we'll go ahead and leave them locked, I guess. All right, so before we power it up, we're actually gonna plug in our ethernet cable. So I'll go ahead and pop it into the 10 gigabit port, even though I could just use one of these. It really isn't a big deal to me, but I'm gonna put it into the 10 gigabit. Of course, that means that I should plug that thing into my ethernet switch that I have in my network rack. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. So we'll go ahead and I'll uh, we'll put that in there. I can always move that later, but it's good for now. All right, so I plugged in the power to the back and I decided to install it up on top of my network rack just for now. And I got this cable coming down, but I'll neatly route that as you've seen in previous videos. But for now, let's go ahead and turn it on. So I press the power button and we should see some status indicator lights here. After a minute for it to boot up, you can see that now all of the uh, hard drive indicator lights are working. 
I'll turn off the light so you can see that. There they all are, all four plus the status light are blinking. And we can go ahead and connect to this thing. We're gonna use the PC app. Okay, so all we do now is go to finds.synology.com. And when we do that, you'll see that it'll start looking for Synology devices that are connected to your network. And in this case, um, here, it, here it is, shows up, and I can go ahead and set it up. All right, so now I wanna show you guys how to add this thing in Home Assistant. What's really cool is Synology has a integration that's native to Home Assistant. So you're actually just gonna see it appear in Home Assistant. And if it doesn't appear, as you can see here, it just shows up as Media NAS, which is the name that I gave to it. If that doesn't show up for you, then you can actually just click add integration and add the NAS yourself as an integration uh, manually. What I wanna do is hit configure it shows here, I gotta give my username and password. My username is Aaron, my password is I'm not telling you. Now for port, it looks like 5001, but I'll just try, try that. But anyway, I'm click submit now and let's see what happens. Okay, so it showed up and it actually shows the NAS itself and then each drive as its own device, which is interesting. And then the whole volume, and I guess it would be each volume if you have more than one volume specified all as um, devices. So let's click finish, and then we'll go down and we'll take a look at those devices. So let's look at our media NAS first. You can see you got the CPU load and utilization, a bunch of different information about the data transfer speeds and things like that. Now what's really cool is that you can also shut down and reboot right from here, which means you can kind of control this thing from here, which is really nice. It also tells you if the software is up to date and I assume that means you can update here, but I haven't tried that. All right, so let's take a look at one of the drives. When you look at the drives, each drive is listed as a device, as I mentioned. You can see that it has uh, below minimum remaining life. No, it's okay. So these are just like warning sensors if something is happening with the drive, the temperature, status is abnormal, or if there's too many bad sectors. So really cool. So lastly, there's the volume device which just tells you how the volume is doing, how much of it's used. So I'm taking four four terabyte drives. I've combined them together as a single volume in my NAS, and that's what it's talking about right here. And it gives you the average disk temp, so the average temperature of all the disks using that volume. So you can see how much is used, zero, because I just set this up, and use space zero. So really cool, a lot of cool data. I just love pulling data in Home Assistant. And if I set up Plex, I'll show you how that works as well. So yeah, a ton of really cool data in Home Assistant, which I always love.